The recording has begun. Oh my! Alright. This is sweet YouTube-only content. I don't know why I always feel the need to point that out, but I do. All right. It's well, probably reload because I'm not seeing anything yet. That's a, Well, no, because that was exclusive. Now we're on to the Twitch stuff. Now oh, yeah. Twitch. Right. You were starting it. That's why I hit reload. Well, it hasn't started yet. I only Ooh. just clicked it. Oh, well, do we have any um, any direction tonight? Or are we just going to chat about WoW? Or? North. Chat about that. North, North is the direction. That's where I'm going on Monday. I'm going to Wyoming on Monday. Yeah, actually, this isn't streaming for me either. Hmm. Hold on. Yeah, I don't. I don't see anything on the. Um, Civ break it. I broke it. Did you That's break it, Civ? What's all you're talking tends about? Tends to happen, man. Tends oh wait, happen. no, it says live. Yep, I just well, had to reload. Go. I just there had to reload. There it goes. Reload. Right, cool. Reload. I'll reload. type it. Reload if you don't see it. Oh. I see a murloc with a mic. Damn it, Ben. You always have to... <laughs> you always have to one-up old Ben. John's trying to work on something with his mouse hand and type one-handed. That's right. And I gotta type <laughs> faster than him. Are you uh, Are you watching a movie with girls, John? <laughs> <laughs> John's all, hey, you want to go to a podcast and not watch the podcast? Hey, look at this. Ooh, I'm going to record hey, something I don't know here. what you'd be doing in the meantime. <laughs> podcast in the new movies. Oh. <laughs> Hi, everybody. John here. Hi, Dr. Nick. This is Azeroth Roundtable. It's a really? weekly World of Warcraft podcast starring me. That's Ben over there. Hi! And our special guest this week, The Wind. <laughs> wow! Yeah, I and, didn't realize uh, that it's so windy next to your window. <laughs> not only that, but we also have Siv. Siv's here. Hi, Siv. Well, hey, John. Hey, Ben. The Wind, uh, you know, brought me around. Guys, let's get right down to it. World of Warcraft, has there ever been a better time to be a World of Warcraft fan than right now? I am so excited about World of Warcraft right now. Like, everything that's going on, like, there's so much stuff happening. Like, we didn't have all this, like, just, I was I was actually telling my wife, who doesn't care about this stuff at all, about this um, last weekend, but there's just so many different genres of stuff happening around warcraft and i love it we didn't really start the show yet <laughs> oh we didn't <laughs> no that was oh. made up <laughs> damn it <laughs> i was all in like show mode man like, oh, get it done. And i'm like why is ben laughing at me <laughs> <laughs> that was great that's great <laughs> uh, that would have been a good start oh that's great oh my gosh <laughs> It's going to be like that all night, Siv. All uh, night. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I expect no less. Oh, man, that was fun. <laughs> Listen to that wind. Uh, that was that was good. Oh, sorry. That was good. Uh, let's see. Is it Fal Alpha Geek's actually going? I think it is. It should be. <laughs> well, it great. says we're live. That's great. <laughs> yep, that's us. Uh, that was awesome. <clears throat> Oh, that made me so happy. Thank you, Siv. You're welcome. I'm here for your entertainment purposes. I'm also glad Ben didn't stop me. He ran with it for longer than I thought he would. Yeah. <laughs> actually, I was just going to let it go. I was going to just let it. He, you should actually thank Ben, because I was going to just ride that wave as long as I could. <laughs> we could yeah, have done two shows the night in how long I would have let you just go and just okay. continue to encourage it. Oh, man. Yeah, and then we just sit here quiet, just watching the whole time. Yep. Then after that, after you're all done, you ready to start, Ben? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. You know, Siv, we do it because we love you. Oh, I know. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be that guy. That guy, huh? That guy. The guy who goes to movies for girls. <laughs> <laughs> movies with girls? I don't remember anymore. It was hey. movies with girls, but movies for girls made me laugh more. So it's kind of that now. 
Yeah, uh, if you uh, aren't very good with the ladies, don't go to the movies to pick them up. Movies with girls. <laughs> really hard. So, come here often. Shh. Looks like you can use some more popcorn. Want me to get you some? Shh. Who are you? What's your favorite part of this movie? Shh. Leave me alone. I'm a big fan of Matt Damon, too. <laughs> Matt Damon. <laughs> hey, everybody. John here. <laughs> We're going to start the show for real. Yeah. Ziv, do you that... remember without note assistance how to start the show? Uh, let's see. I say um, no. No. I don't. <laughs> that's not that's not it at all. Well, it's pretty no. easy, Siv. You basically just say hello, and then you say who you are, and then you say what you're from, and then you say what they're listening to. All right. Oh, and P.S. What they're listening to is Azeroth Roundtable. Okay. All right. Got it? Got it. Golden? Yeah. Green? I don't know what I'm from. But, uh, you know. You can be from anything or just leave it off. Are Whatever we, you want to do. Are really. we green? I need to know if we're green. We're green. Yeah. Super green. You know, we, well, we care about the environment. That, that's what you're talking about, right? Are we yeah, super, man. I recycle. Super green. Mm hmm. I need somebody to say we're super green. John, are you the green bastard? No. Your shirt is green. No, it isn't. Well, it is in the picture I'm looking at where <laughs> oh, you look scared. Got there. And we're super. We're super green. All right, Siv, start All right, us. You ready? In Hi. a one, oh. a two, a three. Hi, I'm Siv. I'm not sure where I'm from, but I'm on Azeroth Roundtable with John and Ben. Well done. Yeah. You know, you could have said, like, where your hometown was if you wanted to, or where you're living now. You could have said the Furt Raid team, AIE, oh, guy I who plays video games. Mentioned frequently on the core podcast as the guy who presses R oh, yeah. when he's in the, the Dragon Knight. Dragon Knight. Knight. I'm the Dragon I'm the God. Oh, okay, I gotta do it again. I gotta do it again. Okay. okay. I'm Siv. I just came from the Dragon Knight by pushing R. Hi. A one. This is Siv. Oh. A two. Oh, man, your countdown. A three. Hi, this is Siv, the Dragon Knight from the Core Podcast, and you're listening to Azeroth Roundtable. Well, okay, hold on. Okay, Before you, you start taking credit for being on shows you're not really on, sir. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. How about as Third mentioned the on the Core Podcast? <laughs> you got it. You got all it. Right. Let's try again. <clears throat> I'm waiting on the countdown. Go ahead and go. Okay. Hold on. Okay. I will count you down. All right. I'm waiting. In the method the of the Tootsie Roll commercial. <laughs> Tootsie Pop commercial. A one. You might not have know it, though, because it doesn't have girls. A two. A three. Hi. This is Sid, three. the Dragon Knight, as mentioned on the Core Podcast. And you're listening to Azeroth Roundtable with John and Ben. Sorry, you were talking over me. We need you to do that one more time, Siv. We need a clean yeah, one. Don't still, talk still, over me. All right, if... all right, all right, all right, all right. Just give me a simple one, two, three, and I'll go. Well, I told you I was going to do it in the style of the Tootsie I'm Pop commercial. I'm not familiar with the Tootsie Pop commercial. <sighs> okay. The little kid asks, I mean, how I, many me, licks does they, it take they, to get John, to the center John, of a Tootsie Pop? John, let me be the little kid. We'll just act it out. So okay. he gets this is the, the hardest count to three I've ever experienced in my life. Okay. Mr. Owl, how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? Well, let's find out. A one, a two, a three. A three. Hi, this no, is No, that Siv. wasn't the countdown. That was us doing what? the commercial for you. Oh, we what? will count it down for you when we're ready for you to go. I'm being trolled here. Chat room, you're my witness. Don't look to them. Okay, yeah. They're outside. Don't try. Yeah, they know. They're here every week. Okay. All right. You want a normal countdown or do you want the Tootsie yes. Pop countdown? Normal. Tootsie Pop confuses me, man. It's just a, it, it's a 
candy sucker with a twinkle. I know what it is. But, All right, you know. here we go. Normal countdown. Okay. One, two, three, Hi, four. This is Siv. What the? Well, there's no four. You go on three. five on a three normal is the countdown. Of the counting. No, on a normal countdown, you go on five. I have no idea. What's Do you want on. the normal countdown or the owl countdown? The owl countdown's on three. The normal countdown's on five. Yeah, but then you said three and made some licking noises, and I got that's uncomfortable. John, that, that's a count up. Oh, good point. These yeah. are all count go ups. Three, two, Did you want to count three, two, down? Two, one. Three, two, one. Okay. Yes, three, right. two, one. Yeah, it did Night Vale's right. It did sound well, like okay, you hawked okay. up to lose. John, do you want me to do it since you're confusing Civ? Sure. Ben, you do it. Okay, we'll do it exactly as he wants it. Three, two, one. Hi, this is Civ. So is that good then? Yeah, that's great. Okay. 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 We'll do that then. Okay. Okay. All right, we if got a ready. plan? Is everybody okay, ready? Seeing as this okay. is apparently way more difficult than it ever is for anyone else ever. Except Jocelyn. Yeah, so if you're even giving Jocelyn a run for her money. Well, I do what I can. Okay. All right. Okay, here we go with the countdown. All right. Okay. Three, two, Three. one. Three. Oh, I forgot you were doing it. Sorry. That was my bad. That one was on me, everybody. That one was on me. I thought I was counting down. That one was me. That was not Civ. That was me. Okay, Ben. Yeah, I'll sorry. Do, I'll do. I stepped on I'll your toes. It. Oh, okay. um, that's right. Wicked Kitten. Yeah. Um, do you want a, the Wayne's World countdown? Yeah, you've seen Wayne's World, right? Siv? How about a... How, what? No. Not you in a long time. Seen, Wait, hold on. You've when never like seen 12. Wayne's World? Oh, man. When I was like 12. Oh. That's a countdown from five, though. How about a? How about the countdown I'm used to, the Tetsemi countdown, where you go three, two, pull. Then you go. Okay. All right. Okay. I don't um, know if that's gonna work for audio, but let's give it a go. I'll, I'm I'm gonna continue to count though, just like the Tetsemi countdown goes. Oh, okay. It's so, okay. Bang. Five, four, three, two, one. Hi, this is Siv, also known as the Dragon Knight from the Corp. From as mentioned, I. Uh, yep. Try it again. How about I just go? No countdown. I'm just gonna say it. Do you think it's okay. the countdown throwing you off? Because that time it, it wasn't the countdown. I'm nervous. Okay. And I'm sweating. Look, you're just talking to us. There's no reason to be All nervous. Right. I mean, we're okay. not. Nervous. Here we go. Ready? I'm ready. John, are you? All right. Ready? Okay, I'm ready. All right. Here we go. Hi, this is Siv, the Dragon Knight, as mentioned often on the Core Podcast. You're listening to Azeroth Roundtable with John and Ben. Oh, you know, that sounded pretty good, John. Sweet. All right, let's call good. it good. All right, let's get one more anymore. take for posterity, and then we'll be golden. All right, here we go. Azeroth Ready? Roundtable, episode 175. My name is Ben Bumhofer, and with me, as always, is John Jagger. How's it going, John? Great, Ben. Happy to be here. We're moving swiftly through the show, just knocking things out of the way like crazy, having a good old time. Uh, yeah. It's Saturday. I've been loving uh, World of Warcraft. It's John, it's Friday. It's Friday. It's Saturday when you're listening to this, maybe. Unless they're listening live, then it's still Friday. It, it's Friday, probably, if you're live. It's Sunday, eventually. At some point, it's every day of the week. Yeah! I don't know why I thought it was Saturday. This week's moving very fast, but not that fast. <laughs> it is. Hey, so with us this week, we have someone who uh, I have the pleasure of calling a friend, who's on my raid team most of the time, and uh, you know him, too. Uh, Siv, welcome back to the show. Thanks, guys. I'm excited to be here and talk about some WoW. Yeah, holy crap, WoW, there is so much going on. Um, before we do that, though, I just have to throw out a really special thank you, because I don't want to forget it at the end, to uh, Mr. Dave Fowley's, who, or Foley, maybe, uh, who let me, or helped me buy a Spectral Murloc from San Diego Comic-Con. Well, all. that's okay. pretty cool. Shout out, man. People keep doing nice things for us. We're going to have to start every episode with a shout out to somebody. Except Pretty nobody much. Nobody did anything nice for old John this week. I, I took you to get dinner tonight. Thanks, Ben. You're welcome. 
You're welcome. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Siv, so, okay, here's the thing. Um, you you did leave WoW for a bit, you know, played a lot of Heroes, did a lot of Overwatch, did, you know, other stuff and everything, and we lost yep. you as a, as a tank in our raid for a little bit. Yep. Um, I'm not calling you out because I understand that uh, sometimes breaks need to happen, as John can definitely attest. Well, plus we already uh, called them out several episodes ago. Oh, uh, probably. I don't know. Well, yeah. Most definitely. Yeah. If not for that, for something else, because, you know, it's Siv. Yeah, just naturally. He just, we call Siv <laughs> out for a lot of things. There's many things. He has many responsibilities. Yes, exactly. Primary of which is scapegoat extraordinaire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, when you weren't there, you wouldn't believe how many times we called you out. It was pretty. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, anything I can do to take the heat off the people who's who really dropped the ball, I'm happy to do so. Especially when I'm not there, because then I don't even know. I'm oh, like, see, hey, it, you know? it was great for Manoroth because anyone who fell off the edge, we're just looking for you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, totally. holes in holes, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but anyway, so so much is going on in World of Warcraft. You're back. Um, here's the big thing. I caught wind of a sort of hope and possibly dream that you have of going DPS. That's true. It's very true. Now, um, no more tank sieve. Yeah, because I'm curious about it. And I mean, I know that you've been, you know, kind of speaking in John's ear a little bit about certain things. So so what's going on with that? Because I know that you really enjoy the tanking role and everything. And I mean, we, we have other people who are able to, you know, who want to fill that and try that out and everything like that. So I'm curious, like, where's your mind at? Because, you know, with all these Legion pre-patch, you know, changes and stuff like that, you're really excited to be back in the game. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, I took a little break for a while. Um, I had been playing WoW. Um, I've been subbed since late BC um, consistently and hadn't ever taken a significant break from WoW. So I was just kind of ready. Um, you know, just kind of need a little little break. A year with no content um, is a long time, um, especially... Um, I mean, as you know, I mean, you guys just got your, your mooses. I got my moose about six months ago. Um, I killed heroic Archie with some other friends that I know that were awesome and kind of carried me through. Jughead um, and the gang. Yeah, exactly. You know, Archie and Jughead and, you know, they all They finally them. had enough. Yeah. So, um, I was kind of like, okay, I mean, I, I still want to kill Archimon with the team because I love our team. Our team is an awesome group of people, of people. Uh, and I really wanted to kill Archimond with with our team, but I knew that probably wasn't going to happen given our progression rate until after the nerfs and buffs and whatever changes. So I was kind of like, you know, maybe this is an opportune time to take a little break and uh, and kind of do some other stuff. Um, also, I am I'm self employed. Um, I work for myself as an engineer, and then I'm also a professional musician, so I've been pretty busy with that stuff um, and just haven't had a ton of extra time. So it was really great to just kind of take a break, do some other stuff, um, you know, all that good business. But, wow, I've kind of been keeping track of changes and everything like that, and I kind of felt like maybe this is a good time to get back in. So I jumped in a week or two ago, and I decided that, you know, in the in the thought of, you know, I want to level, you know, in war in uh, Legion, mm-hmm. um, it kind of seems like DPS is the way to do that. Prot isn't really putting out a ton of DPS. Um, I still play a warrior, by the way, uh, in case y'all are wondering. But um, I, I went back to what I actually originally was with my warrior and that's fury um titan grip fury which is where you wield two big old two handers and it's and it's great and so i jumped back in after the after the patch jumped back in after the changes granted i hadn't played beta i would kind of watched some videos and read some blogs and things like that but i hadn't played the beta at all so i didn't really you know know what the changes uh, entailed i jumped in and man fury felt amazing Guys, and John, I know you shared this sentiment because you've talked about it. Fury feels incredible. It does. It just feels great. It's so it's, good. It's a combination of things. It's it's the animation. It's the the sound effects. It, it's not, <laughs> as I realized last night when we raided, 
it's not even necessarily the numbers or the output because the output isn't quite where I'd want it to be. Um, but it feels so powerful and visceral and just berserker style. It's so cool. I mean, I, I went into raid last night and I've played fury warrior, maybe like a total of like three hours before we raided. Right. I barely (laughs) know the rotation. But it feels so good, right? I had convinced myself in my mind, despite the fact that I'm mostly wearing tank gear that I've just like regemmed and re-enchanted to, to help me out on the Fury side of things. But I came into Raid convinced that I was going to crush the DPS charts. I was going to knock Hunts <laughs> the Wind off of his pedestal and just be like the DPS god of Raid <laughs> last night. And, and then I was a little disappointed with the fact that I was only like second or third on the But you on the felt list. cool but while you did it. It felt amazing. I mean, really, they have nailed it with the animation, the feel. I mean, when you heroic leap into a pack of mobs, it feels incredible. Like, it's just, it, there's a big thump. Your weapons are swinging. Like, there's there's fire and and blood and it's just like it's amazing so i'm just like man this feels so great so you're essentially a living blender just jump in and just ah, that's what it feels like that's what it feels like yeah it definitely really feels really like... good and i'll tell you i have my fury warrior which i was just getting into last week when we talked uh it's now level 100 nice <laughs> So nice. Warrior is the best class. I basically got off the show last week, immediately logged into WoW, and over the course of the weekend hit 100. I was just having a lot of fun with it, and it's good. It's a really, really good spec, and I've I've gotten to spend a little more time with my Rogue. It also feels good. It's not quite at the same level, uh, at least not yet, although... Maybe once I figure out roll the bones and I'm not just like, I don't know, I rolled them. They've been rolled. Well, uh, I did tweet you something I saw today. So you did, that... and I'm going to use that, that guide. Too. And what I've noticed about that guide is it's basically saying, hey, if your eye level sucks, just roll the bones. Just roll <laughs> the bones. Just do it. Just just do it. Pop wide up. Just roll the bones, please. Just roll the bones. So I'm going to roll so the bones. The expansion, yeah, just roll them. Just going to roll That's the bones. That's what I'm going to do. I got bones. I'm going to roll them. Perfect. That's good. So that's uh, so, that's me. Ben, what have you been playing? Well, let me get uh, back to the whole feeling everything is awesome. Because, again, the same feelings that you have, I continually have with my fire mage. Because I walk out somewhere, and then all of a sudden it's like everything's on fire and blowing up and it's just fantastic love it don't the corpses that you kill still smolder after they're dead that is awesome that is so cool ben (laughs) when are you going to make a macro that makes you yell fuego right when you fire fire at them (laughs) you don't know how many times i've thought of that john yeah like i'm i'm close i might have to do it with either Scorch or I doubt Pyroblast because otherwise it'd be just way too spammy. I don't use Scorch a ton, so that could work. I don't use Scorch a ton, but when I do, I yell Fuego. (laughs) Can you just imagine, though, John, you're leveling in a zone, all of a sudden, from the distance, you just hear, Fuego! (laughs) Fuego! (laughs) Just big explosions of fire i like it and uh also to those who have been keeping track of something i've been encouraging ben to do for a long time uh Mm -hmm. that is your official hint that he has uh started and is on the path ben's on the path good job yes reading the dresden files so uh finally um but it feels good yeah it feels really good um and you know just kind of to to mention it a little bit more since you know we went into it last episode um healing on the monk also still feels really good um i actually spent the time to look at the numbers between last week and this week and i'm doing good uh in certain fights i'm like at the bottom of our three healers sometimes i'm at the top and it's so situational based on our different strengths now which is pretty good but 
even more so the new way that you know mana's regen and stuff like that i'm not just throwing everything out as much as i can to just keep everybody topped off i'm now like making those smart decisions on who to heal and when and when Sib was tanking he's someone who i would heal a lot because you know tank stuff like that and uh you are playing with your camera and that was really right. weird i closed something and didn't save changes so. <laughs> when Sib focuses on the camera things go crazy <laughs> yeah um but so you know now that you're dps you see that i kind of heal the dps a little bit less than the tanks like you're supposed to unless you know yeah, people are totally standing fine. and poop and stuff but um it still feels really good and i'm looking forward to you know moving forward in the expansion uh, healing as well as dpsing on my fire mage so it's gonna be interesting how that goes that being said john yes ben last night something truly monumental happened you well okay the first raid team we went into raid nothing i could think of was appropriate for the show at Thank the moment i appreciate it <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> i didn't go see a movie with women in it <laughs> <laughs> oh that's a callback to the pre-show yeah pre-show actually uh, no it's not even on the show sorry everybody it's the pre-pre-show oh, pre -pre it was show. recorded on my end <laughs> oh good you'll find out about that later yeah we'll see we'll see uh anyways um so anyways for raid team we went into raid we took a portal to the right went up saw manoroth said hi hey very quickly said goodbye uh, took another portal up and uh, worked on uh, Archimonde for a little bit. And so, John, you know, you have a moose. I have a moose. Siv, you have a moose. Yeah. Um, our entire raid team, not everybody does. And also, uh, the thing is that, you know, we're a friends and family team, so we're running on normal. Which I still think is BS that Blizzard didn't put this attached with normal, but whatever. Uh, because last night, if it had been normal... Or if the, the quest for it had been dropped on normal, everyone in the raid team would have a moose because we killed Arakamon for the first time ever. Nice. Yeah. As I told Siv this morning, Blizzard can finally release a new expansion now. That's what they've been yes, waiting that's right. for. They've been yes, waiting they, on the Furt team. It's finally and happened. Now we I, can I would get like a new to point one. Out, they mentioned today when the, the actual demon invasion is going to start. They mentioned when demon hunters are going to be available. It's the day after we took down Archimonde. Coincidence? Maybe. I think not. I think not. So, John, uh, thanks for playing along with me. You knew this because we talked about it before the show when we I went to go get that. dinner. It was all um, known. Also yeah, because Siv said it this morning in a Slack chat. That's true. Well, there's that too. Okay. Well, anyways, Siv, I want to know kind of what your feelings are on this because... You know, we've been rating this content for a long time, some of us more than others. Again, yeah. you know, this isn't, by the way, anything that comes out from this point, I want you to know I completely understand why you had to step away for a bit, and I wholeheartedly agree with you that it was the right choice. Oh, yeah. yeah. You don't have to worry about offending me. Okay. Well, no. <laughs> for those in the audio show, I made a really mean face just now. Anyways, um, so, okay, now that we've killed Archimonde, I'm not kidding when I say I'm done with rating this expansion. I'm just yeah. like, yeah. done. I, that's how I feel. Um, I mean, there's reasons for us to go back, you know, to upgrade our rings, which will be useless, you know, five levels into the next expansion. Maybe more. Who knows? Mm, uh, maybe. But, I mean, this is coming from someone who I, I have been going nonstop since we started rating that over a year ago. And I'm sick of the place. Like, so much. I was sick of it. When you left, I was sick of it six months ago, but yeah. I kept going because, you know, it had a final ending point and it's something that we are working for. And, you know, as I've told both of you before, I go for the people when I raid, but sometimes it just gets to the point where there's just so much that you can take. And especially with just how everything's just freaking green everywhere. And it's so <laughs> like, I hate the color green now because of that. Yeah. So like, how are you feeling? You've stepped away for a while. You know, you've come back. We killed Archimonde finally. Like, what are your thoughts on this? I'm, I'm just really curious about it. So, yeah. So my coming back was was um, strategic uh, in its timing <laughs> a little bit uh, because I was away last weekend, wasn't able to make raid. Um, 
you know, we raided Sunday and Thursday, but I'm leaving on vacation for a week on Sunday. So it's kind of like, all right, I know I have this week. And I had kind of talked, you know, with a couple of you and kind of realized like, okay, we're going to try to get Archimond down this week. Um, and I said, like, you know what? I'm going to be there. I want to do it. I've wanted to. I mean, I've killed the end boss of every raid tier with this team since this team's inception. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I've raided nonstop with this team since its inception, um, you know, back in Mists. And um, so I, I really wanted to be there. And it was important to me because I love the people. I love the team. It, uh, it's an awesome group of people. And there's really nothing uh, that could have kept me away from from being there for that kill. So I really wanted to to be there for it. So um, that's why I came back and, and uh, I was like, you know what? I've got this little window of time and I'm going to be gone for vacation. And then by that time, other stuff, demons will probably be falling from the sky. Yeah. So it's a good, uh, good time for me to jump back in for a week and, and try to get it done. Uh, and we did, and we did, and it was awesome. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm back in, in wow. Um, you know, I mean, I, I'm subscribed um i'm intending to play I, I was in a routine for a long time where i would play every morning um you know do my farm back in pandaria i would do my garrison uh, in warlords and just kind of you know keep the wheels turning maybe run a heroic for my daily valor or whatever you know my badges and um so i was kind of in this groove of of playing early in the morning um which yeah, I enjoyed. After, now, uh, after a big break and you're back, and I know that you're leaving soon, but like, what what's it like coming back? I mean, again, you you came to raid for for the one time. Like, are you? Do you want to continue going into the raid with us and everything until the expansion hits, or or are you just kind of like in a holding pattern until demons start falling from the sky, and then you know we we kind of experience the new norm? Yeah. So. Demons are falling from the sky on the 9th of August. Is that correct? I haven't watched the the Q and A today, but I really want to. Um, so I mean, at that point, I, I mean, it just kind of depends on what we're doing. If we are even still raiding, I'm in the same boat as you in that I'm kind of like I, I've been in this raid instance for a year. Yeah, <laughs> it's a long time to see green fire and you know, kill stuff, uh, week in and week out. But, um, yeah, I mean, rating wise, I- I'm kind of either way. I mean, if it ends up like, Hey, we have a group and we're going to raid because so-and-so wasn't there for our Archimon kill and we're going to, you know, do it for him or, you know, Hey, we have a really great group. So we know our comps, right. We're going to go get some crystallized fell or whatever, you know, get those rings upgraded. Um, you know, I, there is, there is a draw there for me. But again, like the draw is, is the people. The draw is my raid team, um, you guys, the other folks in our team that really have been the draw. The content hasn't been drawing me for the last probably eight months. Um, you know, uh, so it's been the people that have been the attraction for me to keep coming back to WoW. So, so sorry. No, go ahead. Just, uh, John, question for you. Hello. You have your moves. Uh-huh. Uh, you stopped writing with us quite a while ago because you know it it just really wasn't hitting any any of those those happy points for you. Right. Is is that something that you'd like come back to? Because I mean, I I honestly don't know if you're even considering you know trying to raid next expansion, even though a lot of the next expansion looks really promising. Yeah, I don't either. Actually, for that matter, um, there is something about raiding that no longer feels rewarding to me. I really like the people, as we've as we've touched on plenty. Uh, I do like seeing the encounters, seeing the story, but there is something about the way WoW's upgrade system through rating and what rating is that doesn't work for me anymore. I, I it's hard to exactly nail down what it is because I don't think it's instant gratification. I play plenty of games that you have to work towards <laughs> things to get them. But at the same time, I think there's an element of not actually feeling like you're progressing. And maybe the the power for your weapons will help. Maybe if I feel like I'm making progress there at least. But 
I don't know. There's just something about that that has lost a lot of the luster that used to be there. And I'll be curious if it comes back because it could very easily be as soon as I'm back in and trying it, I'm back in and 100% on board. And a lot of it's going to have to do with what, you know, how it's balanced, how are the raid counters going to work, you know, is this for our casual group going to work this time around or is it still going to be a little too challenging for our our casual group uh even on normal so there's there's a lot of factors to still figure out and i'm not entirely sold one way or another but you know i was on i think it was thursday night and you guys were running no I think it was last Sunday, actually. You guys were running, and I thought about joining you, but you had already started when I kind of finally got on and settled, and I didn't want to jump in. But I probably would have joined you that night. I was kind of the right level of wanting to do something in WoW and not really being sure what I wanted to do in WoW, which is the perfect headspace to be in where you think, oh, man, I'd get in and and try raiding out. That'd be fun. So... I don't know. I don't know what uh, Legion holds, but what I do know is that I'm very excited about the classes and the class changes. I'm really excited about Demon Hunter, although I will say, man, I'm going to have to make some tough choices come the ninth. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's the same day No Man's Sky comes out. Are you crazy? Oh, are you serious? Oh. I don't know oh. if I can fight demons or if I'm going to be in space. I don't know what's going to be going on. But I'll be somewhere, either space or demon fighting. Well, uh, it sounds like demon fighting is going to kind of be a consistent thing over over a couple of weeks. So yeah, you may um, you may be able to double dip a little bit. Yeah, I think there okay. I think there will be. Good so news. one thing to your to your point though, real quick, John, you might be a significant demographic that represents something Blizzard is doing in in Legion. In that raiding is no longer the end all be all for gear up. Right. In that you know you have these whatever world quest. I don't know a ton about it because I'm I haven't played beta. I, I haven't spoiled anything for myself, so it's all going to be pretty fresh to me when I jump in there. But between world quests and and um, the dungeons with the affixes and stuff like that, it sounds like you're always going to be doing other things that are going to give you a chance to upgrade your gear. And that seems awesome to me. Yeah. It, it's tough. I, I wish I could better identify what it is about kind of the WoW endgame model that we've known up to this point. Again, I don't want to speak for Legion, so real quick I will say I have avoided a lot of information about Legion this go-round, just to keep it fresher longer for myself. So a lot of information that I would normally seek out, I've opted not to this time around, just to kind of see how that goes. And so all I can really speak to is what I've done. And I wish I could put my finger on exactly what it is about... I think there's a time investment versus reward. I agree. And I think that wow asks more than what it rewards for and i think it's a victim of not having much in the way of rewards and that's where it comes from you know a game like diablo they can throw loot at you all day it doesn't really matter all that much uh overwatch you're always working towards a loot box unless you don't care about loot boxes and then i, I don't know what you do in overwatch because all i care why about do you is play <laughs> um so uh same with with heroes you know you work towards quests getting gold so maybe the next hero can be free for you or you know there's there's just stuff that you're working towards and i feel like they kind of nail the time investment to reward on most of their games pretty well i think wow tends to be the biggest ask for potentially nothing now you could have a night that's incredible you could have a night where you clear five bosses and you get something from all five bosses and that feels real good except now you're going to do those same five bosses the next week and not mm -hmm. care one bit so i know they're doing some stuff to try and make loot a little more variable and maybe give some some different options as you go back through so it's exciting again Hopefully that means it's a little more generous with loot. 
because I don't mind if I'm equipping, you know, John Doe's sword of maiming. I guess it wouldn't be a sword, but <laughs> whatever. John Doe's <laughs> tunic. John Trust Doe's me. tunic of maiming for another John Doe's tunic of maiming because well, it's. This one's Titan Forge. Because its stats are better. Yeah, I'm fine with that. That's fine. But the drop rate needs to be high enough to where that feels like a like a chance, as opposed to, well, maybe it will, maybe it won't. Okay, let, well, let me ask something. I've I've got a theory on this, and part of it is because John, I've known you for a really long time, and part of it goes with what Siv you were talking about with like the feel of the the warrior and just how you know it it totally like they've totally captured that. So, back in Wrath of the Lich King, John, you were, you know, pretty into raiding at the time for some of the time. Right. Um, unfortunately, you know, near the end, I mean, both of us had issues finding the right team in our guild and stuff like that. Right. My interest uh, in raiding didn't go away in Lich King. My guild's interest in keeping me interested in raiding is what disappeared <laughs> at that exactly. point. And uh, I'll just throw this out there too. This is when we were on a different server, not in our current guild. Yeah, um, I... yeah, I had to throw that out there. Uh, so here's the thing: back at that time, you were really heavily invested into the story. Mm-hmm. Was part of the raiding experience, part of what you wanted. Um, not necessarily your character killing the Lich King, but because you were so involved in the story, you wanted to see that through. You wanted to you know experience that and get that done there's an element of that it's funny when i try to think of old war which was probably the most into a raid i i was i think a lot of it was the challenge but i think what they really nailed specifically about old war is they found a way to balance the challenge with the mechanics that i never felt and ne- it never felt hopeless. I never, yeah. I was never in a in an old war fight thinking, man, it's just hopeless. It always felt like if we had just executed this a little tighter, we would have had that. We could have done it. And so it always felt like a personal challenge. And and I really liked that. There were a lot of times uh, in a lot of the more recent content, not even just uh, warlords, where. I'd sit back and go, I'm executing, and I just don't think we're going to get this. Whether that's there's too many other people on the team that just aren't willing to to put in the effort and do it, or maybe our gear isn't good enough. I just just flat out like, no, I'm going to just waste the next three hours of my time in the hopes that something clicks, right? And it could also be an age thing. When Lich King was relevant, I was in school and working part-time i had a lot more time to just sit down and say yeah i'm gonna throw away uh three hours of my evening to this nowadays it's a lot harder to say i'm gonna throw away three hours of anything so it's true i i think i value that time more and with valuing that time more the thought of just sitting there and looking at the same boss for three hours and dying repeatedly and then paying a big repair bill and calling it a night, that doesn't sound good to me at all. That sounds th- like the absolute opposite of fun to me. Yeah. So here's what I'm, and again, I don't have all the information because I'm, I haven't been spoiled on it, but here's what it looks like to me. So like, <clears throat> John, if you think about, you and I end up playing games together a lot because we have a, this group of, of mutual friends that we we play lots of different games, you know, in, in a smaller group context, you know, four or five, six of us, whatever. And whether that's Diablo, uh, where we're you know, rolling through a new season of Diablo, or playing some Heroes, or playing some Overwatch. And it's this small group dynamic, and it is a ton of fun. Um, it's just our friends, guys we've known for a long time, and we all play games and we just have a blast. Sometimes we lose, sometimes we win. Doesn't matter. We always have a pretty good time doing that. And especially like if you think about rolling through Diablo, the the rapidity at which you get loot kind of like increases the fun factor, at least for me, of just like, oh, this is cool. Oh, that's cool. Or, right. you know, oh, hey, I got this set piece. So if you think about that and that WoW is lacking that, in a sense, dungeons are a little bit stale because they've just kind of been the same old thing 
for a long time. You know, for almost 10 years, dungeons have basically been unchanged. What did they add? They added Dungeon Finder. You know, like, it's time about it. So we can do the old ones, too. Ooh, time walking. <laughs> <laughs> so... The one thing I have to say with that, the Lich King ones still are awesome. Oh, they're great. Yeah, I love them. Um, but what I'm hoping, this this new dungeon system thing does for people like me and, and maybe even you is it's like, oh, you know, I don't really have the time commitment to put three hours twice a week into raiding. I just want to get together with a couple of friends and go run some stuff and get some, you know, time investment plus reward, you know, get some loot, you know, and, and do those dungeons and stuff. Those dungeons will always be a challenge. They've taken some of this Diablo tech, it seems like, and kind of ported it over to WoW, yeah. where it's like, look, these dungeons will never get still. There will always be something you can do to raise the bar a little bit, a little bit, a little bit to keep it challenging, to keep it interesting, and to keep you getting cool stuff that you can use. And if it's something that you can't use, guess what? You can trade it to somebody in your group. Maybe they can use it, you know. So you're like, I think there's going to be this cool uh, dynamic, small group dynamic um, that's going to really be a lot of fun, uh, you know, to do. Maybe kind of just as pickup stuff, not necessarily scheduled stuff like you would for a raid, but just like, hey, I've got four friends on, let's go run a dungeon. Well, and I think to kind of further your analogy, I, I think one of the key differences between Diablo and World of Warcraft and how they handle content like this is Diablo's challenge meta, when, or kind of the way it works, when you think about running greater rifts and regular rifts and upgrading your gear and all of that, it's kind of succeed until you fail. Right. World of Warcraft is kind of fail until you succeed. Right. And I think that might be where part of the issue is, because when I play Diablo, it's, oh, yeah, we cleared this rift. OK, now we cleared this rift. OK, let's make it more challenging. Oh, we cleared that, too. We can make it more challenging. And, you know, that's one of my favorite things when a new season comes out is we'll have a big group of people playing and they'll say, John, can you start up the greater rift and I'll start it up. And everyone gets to see the number that I picked for our challenge level for the greater rift. And you'll hear Bo <laughs> or somebody go, uh you think we're going to be able to do that? <laughs> and it's like, yeah, let's try it. Why not? Let's go for it. You know, let's, let's just see if we can. And you've got that. You're more likely to succeed. So keep pushing until you fail. Whereas world of Warcraft kind of encourages you to go the other way where it's like, well, we're not going to succeed, but let's keep banging our head against it until we manage to. And then we can go back to failing again for a little while. And yeah. I, I can totally see that as something as well. I mean, it goes back to uh, kind of what you were saying about how Olduar really felt like, you know, if, if you just really execute, you can do it. You're not being just overloaded with so much damage being poured out by so many different mechanics or something like that. Whereas, I mean, Siv, you and Tet and I have talked many times about, do we have the DPS to actually do this fight? You know, right. where a lot of it comes down to, OK, you really do have to go back and, you know, get yeah. people. Is it more mathematically back. possible? Yeah. To... Or upgrade your gear or, yeah. OK, if I just switch this piece with this piece, then my DPS output is another thousand and that'll just just push us over the top. Or and I hate to say it is hunts the wind with us this week. <laughs> you know, <it's, laughs> just One of those things. It's it, it, it is very frustrating. And I think that this and you know i'm really trying not to dog on warlords it's 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 gone it's over at this point but looking back at it it's been the expansion that has made me just frustrated with raiding and i'm i'm sure if you've listened to this entire expansion you know that it's it's come up multiple times or just like it it's just too much because you're right, John. We can't get past a certain point. It has absolutely nothing to do with our skill level. Well, I mean part of it is, but it, it's the fact that we're setting ourselves up to fail because one, we don't have the Raiders that are in, you know, like the, the right progression always mindset don't have the time for it. And I mean, granted we've been able to overcome 
all these mechanics, but because of how our team is put together and how you know the roster constantly shifts, it it just doesn't work for us because there's so many different things being thrown at us that are just pushing us down in like showing us the door out as opposed to you know that that glimmer of light and hope of we can do this yeah and that was my big hope when they kind of talked about what they were going to do with it was my big hope was all right we'll make normal easy enough to to kind of breeze through almost i mean not lfr you're guaranteed you're going to clear the entire place in a night but make it easy enough to where oh yeah we got through that place so that that group can do that on a regular basis and start to say you know what let's try heroic out let's give that a go let's let's see that and then that's where they are and then maybe you know from there hey maybe we take a few of us and maybe try mythic out let's see how that goes like that should always be the the progression and i'd rather see a hundred different difficulty levels in world of warcraft and have it to be where you do know you're going to clear the place in a night but you're always encouraged to push to a point where you're not uh, i think that sounds more fun to me than mm -hmm. banging my head against the wall for hours on a night and then calling it and going to bed mad at other people and annoyed with the game i, I like, just don't think that's a healthy way to yeah like civ just oh if you just tanked better civ had just tanked better and not fallen in that pit why, why didn't you use cool down why did he press r <laughs> doesn't he know pressing r kicks him out of the dragon knight uh so it it's just it's just very weird but again i don't want to sound like i i'm also just picking on warlords because i want overall the message here to be it does look like this expansion from the outside at least and you never know till you play it is taking a lot of lessons from games like diablo and stuff like that and it gives me hope that maybe they are going to pull in some of those best elements and and make something really cool out of it and it's always iteration because who knows what we're going to see from the next one yeah. uh, who you know in two years two years maybe knock on wood two <laughs> it'll years. be two years uh we'll <laughs> see years. we'll see what's going on with the next one and who knows maybe they maybe the lesson they've taken away is man putting in legendaries putting up more variants of gear giving people something they can power up all the time regardless what they're doing is really fun we need to just take that to the next level yeah well, i mean oh go ahead Ziv. i got something after you Ultimately, like one of the things is you kind of reach a plateau in WoW of your your gear. And one of the fun things about WoW is getting new gear, getting better stuff, you know, incorporating that into your kit, seeing your numbers go up and doing more damage or healing or whatever it is you do. So my gear has barely changed in the last like I don't know, ten months. Well I you mean, have I Thing, so well i raided a ton He's right at the beginning there. i got you really lucky <laughs> <laughs> i mean i'm i'm currently item level 717 so it's best in slot for normal with some heroic pieces as well so like raiding has no upgrades for me there's one cape from zola rock that's kind of a side grade and who cares but uh, there's just not much there I think one of the things that they've realized is that that is not fun. It is not fun to be like, well, got the same gear I've been wearing for the last six months. And, you know, so I think that this, they've, they've added so many incremental, you know, a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better gear through incremental difficulty, at least on the dungeon side or the world quest side, where there's going to be things that you can do where, it's like, okay, I know that we've got this dungeon on lockdown. Now, what if we do it with this affix? You know, okay, well, now the tank's not going to be able to hold on to the mobs very well. They're going to be skittish. They're going to be flying all over the place. You know, there's a high risk of people dying because they're going to get attacked by some red. So now that just made this dungeon incrementally difficult, more difficult. But we're going to get incrementally better gear. We're going we're gonna to have definite chances for upgrades or at the end of it we're going to get some big piece that's going to be a huge upgrade or what i don't remember how it works but it seems like they've kind of realized like hey 
the reason people don't run dungeons, there's no reason to. Like, yeah. it's it's stupid. Here's the thing. I love the mythic dungeons that are in the game right now. I've ran them a ton because it's the best way to get Valor. You get 250 per, and there's a weekly quest sometimes where you get 500 plus a chest for running four of them. So it's like, okay, I can make 1,500 Valor in, like, an hour and get a raid chest, right? That's pretty sweet. Mythic dungeons are not hard if you're careful and if you're at least like normal level geared for the the final raid right so i've loved them the problem is other than the valor there's not any real great consistent loot upgrade system because the loot in there is a huge loot table that everything shares and it's super random i've run it and i've gotten pieces where i'm like sweet a 725 piece oh wait it's a freaking hunter chest that dropped from my warrior. <laughs> like, sense. oh, okay, All great. All gear is hunter gear, it's, Siv. It's 23 gold. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. But so th- there's just, like, there's this cool system, you know, incrementally more difficult. The rewards just aren't there. That's why people aren't doing them, I think. So it seems like they've kind of looked at that and gone, hey, there's got to be a better way. You know, maybe they've stolen stuff from Diablo. Maybe they've stolen stuff, you know, whatever. Where they've kind of gone, hey, there's a really cool thing we can do here where it gives people a way to engage the game that doesn't have a massive time commitment, gives them incremental gear upgrades, which makes people feel good. It does. It feels good. And it's a way for you to interact with your friends. Like, I think it's great. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So, okay, here's the thing. Something that I'm really curious about, and th- this is going to be one of those, you know, I don't know, one of those conversations where we just kind of go off the rails and discuss things and maybe come up with something that will never happen, but pie in the sky type of stuff. So here's the thing. People constantly come back to Diablo every season. It's something that's new that, you know, that, that people love. John, you were just saying today in, in the car to get dinner, new season Diablo soon. You mentioned it on the show. You know, you're excited about that. Um, new heroes are coming. You're excited about that. Uh, you, I, I don't know if you play Overwatch as much as you used to or not, but I know you still like the game. I still really uh, like Overwatch. I just haven't played a lot of it. Lately. Yeah, well, maybe after the show. Uh, anyways, Siv, I know that, you know, you, like you said, you're playing all these other games and everything as well. So here's the thing. Look at Blizzard games. I mean, Hearthstone, insanely popular and monetized, like Blizzard gets bank off of it. Uh, Overwatch, insanely popular. I mean, it's on consoles. That definitely helps. I'm assuming that they still get bank off of it, you know, based off of loot boxes and things like that, because there's always going to be people out there who buy microtransaction stuff. Look at Heroes. Insanely popular. It's definitely monetized because people are, you know, buying Heroes and things like that. Heroes is the most expensive free-to-play game I've ever played. Yeah. (laughs) A lot of people, actually. Yep. Uh, I don't even want to know how much I've spent. It's a lot. uh, lot. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. I'm not even, like, talking about bringing in, you know, monetization, you know, in small chunks or anything like that. It's the idea that there are these buy once or free-to-play games that are making Blizzard a ton of money. On top of that, look at Diablo. That has no microtransactions, nothing in it, and it still has such an insanely huge draw to it that it keeps bringing people back. So if if you think about Diablo's monetization... So many of us got Diablo 3 for free yeah. because we did the annual pass for WoW mm-hmm. and we bought we, Reaper of Souls. But, I mean, Reaper of Souls is the only thing I've ever bought in Diablo. I never played <laughs> yeah, uh, Real Money time. Auction. That's all I've spent. Like, how much was Reaper of Souls? I don't remember. Like was it 40 like 40 bucks or 80? 30 bucks or, Netflix yeah. There's edition or something like that. Yeah. So I bought look, the digital one and that's that's all I've spent on Diablo. It, Diablo has provided a lot of entertainment value for me for the 30 or 40 bucks I've spent on it over the last what, exactly. like years. There's all these games that you, you buy once or it's just free to play. And granted, some of them have microtransactions, which, which help support them and everything like that. But something like Diablo that is so, so popular. I mean, I, I it just might be the fact that, you know, I have a friends list that everybody plays except for me, usually. Um 
what is it about WoW where we actually pay a subscription monthly that Blizzard can't get that same type of feel, the same type of fervor into it any more than they used to? And I mean, I'm talking about bringing in new players as opposed to just re-exciting the, the current population. I think it's a uh, fear to change too much. I, I don't know if I've ever made this analogy. I think I have made the analogy on the show that they have found themselves as a new team in charge of WoW, and it's this kind of legacy product, and it's still insanely popular. I mean, no matter how much doom and gloom gets spouted every time they used to announce subscriber numbers, uh, it's the biggest MMO out there, and it has been since the day it came out. And if you're in charge of it, you're intimidated mm -hmm. you don't want to be the ones who killed the thing that's been the most popular mmo since it came out and i would say the thing that gives me the most hope for wow's future is how radical they seem to be going with legion legion is the first time i have played i should say the legion patch because obviously legion's not out yet but legion is the first like going into a new expansion patch that I have played where I felt like Blizzard sat down and said, we are going to change the way this works. We're going to change the game. Like what works, what doesn't, we're not afraid to throw things out. We're going to do what we need to do to, to make this the game we want it to be. And I don't think that they have done that for the past several expansions. They've had good mm -hmm. expansions, but they've been safe. Mm -hmm. I don't think they've been big risk takers for them. And I think the key word that what you touched on there is, is I think you hit it right on the head, legacy. It's, it's about this legacy. It's about this history of this game that really changed the genre in a lot of ways. Um, and... I think you're exactly right. I think there's there's probably a a culture on that team of you know there's a, there's this great game that we built. Don't screw it up. You know, don't be that guy who who messes up the game that made this company. You know what I mean? Like there's there's whether whether it's whether that's you know said or just implied. It's hard to say. Don't know. I don't work for Blizzard. So I don't know, but um, I'm sure it's I'm sure it's at least implied, right? So I I feel like with Warlords, it, it felt tame. It felt very regurgitated. It felt very, you know, historical. And I think that you're exactly right with with Legion. It feels like they're taking more risks. They're doing more innovative stuff. I think they know because I, I mean, basically every other paid MMO is gone. Uh, there's Mm -hmm. not any left they're free to play or they're non-existent and even the free to play ones you know the biggest ones got what how, how big was rift or whatever like maybe two million at its heyday for i mean if you if you get two million people playing your mmo you're doing pretty good in these days um wow from what i've heard from people who know people the, the the estimation is that WoW is back up near 8 million subscribers. That's a good yeah. jump. Yeah, that's a huge jump. People are excited about Legion. I think there's some iconic stuff that's coming back with Demon Hunters, Illidan. Everybody loves Illidan. Um, you know, all that stuff. But they're also, I think, going to retain people better because of some of the changes that they've made. Um I think it's going to be super rad, and I think they know it's do or die time. They've got to pull out all the stops because the genre may or may not be around in five years, ten years, whatever it is. You know, um, the player base has changed too. I think the player base is older. I mean, look at us; we're all in our thirties. You know, we're all professionals. We have jobs that we work full time. We're not college kids. You know, eating ramen and scraping together fifteen bucks to go buy a game time card. You know, like. It's not that way anymore, but we still enjoy the game because yeah. ultimately Warcraft is about story and the story is there and it's a story you get to play and interact with and be a part of and, you know, shape in a way. So the storytelling is amazing and I think that there's a lot of people like us 
that have been playing the game for a while, maybe took a little break, now are coming back and going, man, the story's just so good. Like, I just, I got to be in there. I got to play it. Maybe I don't raid hardcore four nights a week like I used to back in, you know, BC. But the story's there. I can get a piece of it. I can play it. I can relive, you know, kind of that that glory uh, of of that legacy through this new story. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think so. Um, to kind of close it out, I, I just have to agree. I, I really do feel that... Um, you know, a lot of people are really optimistic about Legion, uh, you know, despite what they think of Warlords, whether they loved it or, or hated it. Um, as a fan base, we all seem to be kind of backing this, you know, the, the, the story content starting to kind of trickle out through like the Harbinger or Harbinger, whatever you, however. You How ask. good is that stuff? Oh my gosh, it's great. Like the Gold Anvil's mean, great, the Cadgar one's great. Oh. I'm looking forward to everything else that's coming from that. I mean, I'm just I'm so stoked about I mean because they've kind of been doing more and more of this right like for mists we had that cool you know blew the monkey king away type of you know that <laughs> that stuff I loved those like I loved the animation style of that um, I don't I'm not someone who watches a lot of animation stuff mm-hmm. um, and in particular that style I wasn't familiar with I don't remember what the style is called um, but it's that kind of Japanese partial motion, whatever style they call that. I don't remember where it's ink based, whatever. I thought it was super cool. Like I, I saw that and I was like, this is amazing. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm really glad that they brought that back for this. But they're doing they're doing comics, they're doing uh, motion comics, cinematic thingies. Comics have been they're awesome, doing- although you're right, I read it. Man, that is full of spoilers, isn't it? <laughs> Dude! Yeah. Holy crap! I mean, I don't want to spoil the listeners. The spoilers. I, don't I know. Read. Yeah, if don't read four if you don't want spoilers. Because holy crap, has, uh, it's like page one, bam, spoiler. Blizzard has taken Whoa. a strong stand that this isn't a spoiler, so I feel yeah. very safe in saying that. No, don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't. Uh, I mean, give people time. Wait till after it comes out or whatever. They'll yeah. find out. But I mean, between you might between not the want comics... to lip read what I said because I muted when I said it. <laughs> but, <don't. laughs> but I mean, we've got comics, we've got cinematic stuff, we've got a freaking audio book series essentially coming out. Like, it's it's amazing. The the movie tie-ins, it's I mean, I'm blown away, and I, it it really makes me excited, and I think it's really going to captivate people. I'm. A little shaky on lore stuff right now. Like, kind of like... Well, let me tell you. What happened to Medan? <laughs> like, is he gone? Is he written out of existence? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know what's going on with Medan. Don't, you, don't worry about Medan. Apparently nobody cares, so he's See, I think he's that's done. Blizzard's... I think that's Blizzard's official line is... Yeah, don't, don't, don't worry about it. He's, I don't even know who it is, so I don't care. Medan who... <laughs> You exactly. don't know who Medan is? No, no, that's their stance. Oh, okay. That's what that's, Blizzard no, said. I, I don't know who it is. That's because you didn't read the, the comic that featured Medan prominently. And you know what? You shouldn't have. Because it was Alliance propaganda, and I hate oh, it. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, you said not to read it because it was Alliance propaganda. I remember that. It was. It was Alliance propaganda. It, it, was he one of the Ronins? Where, no, like, he basically, was. he's the he's the one who shows up and just fixes he's everything? He's the son of Garona, right? And he's, he's just, I don't know. He's the son of Medivh and Garona. You don't have to worry about which is weird because they were, she and was his daughter he, in the movie. Yeah, exactly. It's gross. They've kind of retconned yeah, him it, out. It, it doesn't yeah. exist. Yeah. He he is, according to the lore that we have, the guardian, current guardian of Azeroth. Well, let, let's put it this way. Uh, there's as much truth to his existence in the rumors of Azeroth as Richard Gere in that rumor about him. All right, <laughs> here we go. Azeroth Roundtable exclusive. We're beginning it now. Ben, you're going to play Agra. Uh, <laughs> okay. I will play Thrall. All right. And so scene one, act one. This is the hey, official canonical it. story of what happened to Medan. Starting right now, uh, so they're they're laying in their orc bed together. Uh, Agra's Agra, Agra. Yeah. You mean you're Duratan? What? No. Ag- okay. No. Agra okay, yeah. is Thrall's wife. Yeah. 
Gotcha. I'm good. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's reading a book. Okay. And Thrall fell asleep early because he's tired. Uh, he has to carry a big heavy hammer all the time, so he was sleepy. He fell asleep, but then all of a sudden he sits up and goes, Oh, ah. What, what is a Thrall? Nice voice. I like it. Thank you. Agra, I just had a dream about this kid named Madan. He became the guardian of Azeroth, but I'm pretty sure I just made it all up. So anything you've ever heard about him, you should probably just pretend never happened. Okay, sounds pretty dumb. And then he goes back to bed. The end. Yep, and that's pretty much it. Madan, out of canon. That was an Azeroth Roundtable exclusive. The story of Madan told here live. You're All welcome. Right. Doesn't get any better than this, folks. It Acting. doesn't. Acting. And on that note, that's going to do it for Azeroth Roundtable this week. Uh, yes, Sib, thank you very much for joining us. We greatly appreciate it. It is always a pleasure chatting with you and throwing you under the bus. Yeah. Uh, so in the meantime, how can people find you? You can find me on Twitter. I am at Siv, with an S, S-I-V underscore A-I-E. And uh, you can find me in Overwatch doing monkey stuff. Oh, Yeah, I like the to... fact that uh, you specifically changed to a monkey to try to kill me when I was Junkrat. And it worked. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> we won the match, though. All yeah, right. That's All right, that's you because... Overwatchers, cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is crap. Perfect. Uh, John, how about you? Where can people find you? If people want to hear more from me, they can follow me on Twitter. I'm at John underscore Jagger. You can also listen to me talk about Heroes of the Storm on CORE. CORE! That is uh, the official uh, Frog Pants Heroes of the Storm podcast. You can find out more about that at heroesforyou.com. And if you want to watch the show live and participate in the post-show games... Core Live happens every Tuesday from 6 to 9 Pacific Standard Time, and uh, it's a good time. Yes. It's a good It's a good time. Ben, what about you? Where can people find you? Uh, best place to find me is on Twitter. I am at BenTheMage. Uh, I do another show called Battle Pets with Eludra. We talk about battle pets in the world of Warcraft. And I also do one with Alec Haz and Lita called Geektopia. Where we geek out about um, topias and other things. Siv's actually been on that show as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah? What's... About home... Oh, home brewing. That's geeky. That's hipstery, really. It is. Yeah, yeah. I know. We were going to change the title to, you know, Hiptopia. But, you know, that's taken, you know, before it was cool. So You should, you should have me on. You should have me on again to talk about food trucks and Ubering. Oh my gosh. I, Two things I do a lot of. So hipster. <laughs> I can't deal with it. Uh, this show, however, if you have any questions, comments, uh, want to email them to us, make sure you send that to azrothroundtable at gmail.com. Believe it or not, we do read everyone. We don't always respond and we don't always bring it up on the show, but we do save them because we get some uh, interesting topics. Um, oh, on that show- note, though, we do frequently, well, not frequently, we do occasionally do feedback shows, in which case we go and dig them all up because we save them. Uh, and we have gotten some really good and interesting ones. There was one I would have loved to have talked about today, but I actually feel like it might have rehashed a little too much of what we had talked about previously. And then we kind of talked about it anyway. But we'll uh, go ahead and probably address that one in the future because I actually thought it was pretty interesting, as well as some of the, the chat that was in the chat today. Yeah, um, the long story short, uh, Mr. J Time, uh, it's right in your name. Time is a huge factor. Yep, there's the short answer for now until we talk yeah, about very it short later. Answer. Um, so with that, uh, follow us on Twitter. We are at AzerothRT. If you want to listen to all of our episodes, you can always go to iTunes where you can leave us a review, which is great. I saw a couple new ones on there. We'll get to those at some point. Um, also on, uh, what else are we on, John? AzerothRoundTable.com, Stitcher, and Alpha Geek Radio. Uh, the theme song that you heard, the brand new one, is actually called Rhino's Theme by Kevin McLeod. You can find more of his music. His music. I, I broke on the word his. Uh, anyways, his music at incompetech.com. Well, Ben. Yes, you, John. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah? Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling very loved by our audience. Yeah, you know, me, me too. I, I'm feeling the love. In fact, 
we think you're all great. Uh, and that is because we've received uh, way more support than I even anticipated uh, via our Patreon page, which is available at patreon.com slash AzerothRT. We've got a lot of people supporting us there. I'm actually working on the artwork for the people that are at the uh, pledge level that gets artwork, so you should be mm-hmm. getting that probably Sunday, maybe Monday. Maybe we'll actually go into the new month and we'll just make first of the month the date that I pass that out but really thank you we appreciate it for anybody out there still listening if you want to know the best way to support ben and i it's patreon.com slash azeroth rt you can pretty much pledge whatever you want um, but there are some cool reward tiers and in addition to that you can also uh you can also throw another little bit of support by going to geekasylum.etsy.com and uh, pick up a necklace or keychain that is another way but the best way, Patreon. It's good stuff. Yep. Um, and you know what? If you're going to BlizzCon, I might be able to swing uh, having a couple keychains and or necklaces with me. Maybe. I, I know the person who makes them and uh, I can probably put in a good word for that. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Anyways, hmm. Uh, that's Azeroth Roundtable. And uh, bye, everybody. Wait, what was it? Uh, just, just bye? Or Goodbye. I don't remember what it was last week. Give us our outro. Go. Have a good evening. Hey, you should probably count them down. I should. What? No, no counting. No counting. Three, two, one, go. Bye.